Hey what's up exiles and welcome to my harvest league molten strike juggernaut league starter. In this video we will be showcasing a build that is extremely tanky, deals decent amount of damage and not too expensive. Just look at this, we are literally face tanking a minotaur. The sheer tankiness of this build even allows it to be hardcore viable regardless of whatever skill level you have. In this video we will also talk about leveling and item progression along the way. So let's get started. Now Molten Strike Juggernaut is an all time classic. We utilize endurance charges in addition to items that grants us benefit based on how many of them we have to reach crazy amount of damage and overall survivability without having to invest too much. Molten Strike is also one of the best skills in the game for clearing packs. It scales with attack and area damage, which leads us to the ascendancy and how it helps with scaling all of these things. As a start, go for Undeniable. This node gives you all the accuracy you need for all stages of the game. In addition, you get increased attack speed and even more accuracy when you deal a critical strike. Easily one of the best attack support ascendancies in the entire game. Next, we take every single endurance charge node in this ascendancy. Starting with unflinching. This node gives you all the endurance charges if you were hit recently. Next, we go for unyielding. This node provides increased damage and area of effect per endurance charge. And finally, Unrelenting. This one scales your survivability with endurance charges. Now we do have a total of 10 endurance charges in this build, so you can imagine how many bonuses we are getting from each one of these nodes. Now next we will be going over the passive tree, but before that, a quick disclaimer. This video is made right before the start of Harvest League. GGG did say that they will change some part of the passive tree. Your pathing will change, however I don't think GGG will remove any of the notables we are going for in this build. That being said, now let's take a look on how your tree progression should look like. As you might have noticed, our tree focuses on life and percentage increased damage. The flat values will be provided by our gear and gems. And speaking about gear, there are a few unique items that I want to recommend for you while leveling in this video. Although fear not, these items are not mandatory, except for the last one I will recommend for each slot type. Said items are required by the build and you will try to get those in your second or third week of the league. Alright then, let's start with your weapons. Dual wielding thread arcs as soon as you can afford them gives you a huge damage boost in the form of lowering enemies fire resistance while attacking, thanks to the built in curse on hit in the weapon itself. Now once you reach act 5 you might want to consider using a defensive option instead, especially if you are playing hardcore. That comes in the form of the dark seer. This scepter gives you life based on your level, in addition to global increased damage and chance to blind on hit. Blind drastically reduces enemy chance to hit you which generally increases your survivability overall. Last but not least, we have Nebulak Nightmare Mace. This weapon is crucial to have whenever possible. It can be obtained from the Elder, usually becomes available after the 5th day of the leak. It provides us with large amount of added fire damage based on our physical damage. The weapon also adds flat physical damage alongside elemental damage reduction and 500 armor per 1 endurance charge and we have two of those, you can see where the synergy comes from. Now ultimately the build will start functioning properly once you get a hold of this weapon, it is just that important. Now as powerful as all of that sounds, using this weapon does not come without a proper downside. 
you will take 200 fire damage per second per endurance charge if you have been hit recently. And the total value is doubled because we are using two of this weapon. This means that we have to sustain over 4000 self-inflicted fire damage every single second. A nice way to sustain some of that damage is by using two Calm's Wearings. Each gives 0.4% of our maximum life as active regen per second per endurance charge. And we do have two of these. That's a total of 8% life regenerated per second at 10 endurance charges. Each rank also provides plus one to maximum charges, thus there is really no replacement for them. I recommend using the not upgraded version until you can either upgrade them yourself or just buy them whenever possible. Now let's talk about your amulet. A good starting option is the Karui Ward, a very common amulet that goes for one alchemy even at the first day of the league. It gives us accuracy, movement speed, and projectile damage, and that's everything you will need while leveling with this build. Now feel free to replace it for a rare amulet with high life roll whenever you feel like it. However, once you can afford it, get Xav's blood. It gives you Avatar of Fire, which converts the other half of your damage into fire. It also gives you 10% increased life, strength, and fire damage penetration. Easily the best item for its slot. Now this amulet isn't cheap, but not particularly mandatory because you can manually take Avatar of Fire from the passive tree itself. You might want to do that and wait one or two weeks until the price of this amulet goes down. Once that happens, and allocate Avatar of Fire and buy it, this will free you up around 4 to 5 passive points which can be invested somewhere else. Now let's talk about your chest. You can really use any rare chest until you can afford a tabula, basically the same thing you do every league. However, if you still want an early game recommendation, then get yourself a thousand ribbons and try to 5 link it yourself for Molten Strike. But of course, having a tabula is still better once you can afford farming one in the Blood Aqueducts. Now once you have saved up for a real chest, a good recommendation is Belly of the Beast. You can either get one and try to 5 link it yourself, or keep saving until you can afford our best in slot option for the slot, Lore Weave. Although good in all builds, our build needed particularly because it increases our maximum resistances alongside giving us nice damage and good amount of life. And that's important to mitigate some of the self-inflicted fire damage by our weapons. Your priority is to have max roll on the resistance and flat physical damage mods. Again, you will be just fine with any rare chest, but Lore Weave is simply too good to pass for this build. Moving on to your helm. The Peregrine will provide you with all the accuracy you need while leveling. Now once you get the Accuracy Ascendancy node, switch to Star Conja's head. Overall, a very good helm with lots of life and attack speed. At that point, you might want to stop and wait until more people start killing the Awakener, because he drops one of the top priority items for this build, which is Crown of the Inward Eye. This helm gives us lots of life and armor. In addition, it makes it so that any modifiers to life also applies to attack damage at one third of their values. This is your best in slot option damage wise. In addition this helm becomes almost free once enough people have actually killed the awakener. Now once you have this helm and have enough time, you might want to farm Uberlab for the plus 2 projectiles molten strike enchantment. Once you have that you should be good to go. Next on the list we have belts. A good start will be getting prism weave while leveling. Easily one of the best belts for elemental attack belts at the start of the league. It's not cheap on the first few days, but the extra damage is definitely worth it in terms of clearing speed. Once you reach maps, try to get yourself the Nomad belt. It gives us around 90% increased damage to Molten Strike, in addition to some good attributes to help you equip some of your items. But finally, your top goal is to get Cyclopane Coil, a build that drops from the Elder and gives us good amount of life and damage. But the real reason why we use this belt is because we can easily make it so that intelligence is our lowest attribute and strength is the highest. This results in immunity to freeze and ignite, and these two are the most annoying elemental elements to deal with, and you no longer have to worry about these after getting this belt. Next moving on to your boots, start with Victoria's Flight. This is pretty much self-explanatory as a best in slot option for any build starting the league. Now you don't need that if you have already managed to find a good rare boots with movement speed and life. Ultimately your goal is to have this door at some point of the league. It does drop from Uberlab, and we do need this because it gives us plus one to our maximum endurance charges in addition to elemental resistances, strength and some movement speed. Sadly it doesn't have life but the extra endurance charge makes up for that. This leaves us with gloves, 
I want to leave this one empty because you need to have a rare one with as many resistances as you can possibly have to compensate for whatever resistances you have missing. However, if you want a recommendation for the slot while leveling, then I highly recommend Meganard's Vice. It adds lots of strength, life regen, which basically translates into more survivability, which is a welcome at any stage of the game. And that was it for your items. For jewels, I recommend anything with life, increased attack speed, or attack damage with maces and scepters. And for suffixes, as many elemental resistances as you can possibly have. Your target for resistances is 60%. Because since we have 10 endurance charges that we will have 100% uptime on, you get 40% resistances from these, which will drive all of your resistances to 100% if your base value is 60%. Anything above that is really unnecessary. For Watcher's Eye, go for increased life recovery rate while affected by vitality, and increased attack damage while affected by precision or gain percentage of your physical damage as extra fire damage while affected by anger. Now we do have lots of that thanks to our weapons, so I recommend you to stick with attack damage with precision. But ultimately, it's up to you. Now let's talk about your gems. For your main setup, we have Molten Strike, it's linked with Multi Strike, Elemental Damage with Attacks, and Inspiration. These are your 4 mandatory gems. Once you have a 6 link, add Rage and Combustion support to them. Now for our aura setup, we have Anger, Vitality, and Herald of Purity. All those are linked with level 4 Enlighten. In addition, we have level 1 to 3 Clarity linked with Blood Magic somewhere else to help us with our mana sustain. Next we have a Movement Skill setup, we have Leap Slam linked with Faster Attacks and Fortify. This setup usually goes in one of your weapons. Finally, to help us reliably trigger elemental overload and apply flammability curse, we do have a 4 link support setup using orb of storms. It's linked with increased critical strikes gem, curse on hit, and flammability. Whatever remaining gem socket you have is left for whatever you see fit. You can have molten shell, blood rage, cast when damage taken setup, a portal gem, it's really up to you. Next moving on to bandits, I recommend helping Oak for the added life regen and increased global physical damage which will be converted to fire damage in the end, in addition to some nice flat physical damage reduction. However if you don't care about any of these things then just like kill all of the bandits, it's up to you. But for pantheons, go for Lunaris for the majors and to Kohama for the minors. You will always be stationary while attacking so it's easy to fully utilize the potential of this pantheon at all time. Finally, don't forget to use your oils to allocate Tribal Fury on your amulet. This notable somewhat mitigates the need to use Ancestral Call while clearing. This means that you no longer have to worry about gem swapping between mapping and bossing. For flasks, we have a Quicksilver Flask with immunity to curses, a Dying Sun for that extra 2 projectiles to Molten Strike, Cinder Swallow on for the increased life recovery and for its onslaught effect, a granite flask for its increased armor, and finally, a sulfur flask for its consecrated ground effect and increased damage. And that was it for this build guide. Make sure to let me know your opinion in the comment section. Did you like this build? Do you want to see more? Then maybe consider liking the video and subscribe so you don't miss any future leak starter like this one. My name is Phoenix and I will see you all in the next video.